Welcome to the History AI Podcast, where the past comes alive with facts, anecdotes, and a dash of humor. Here are your hosts, Chuck and Marco. Welcome back to the History AI Podcast. I'm Chuck, and with me as always is the Encyclopedia of History himself, Marco. Thanks, Chuck. I prefer historical guru, but I'll take it. Today, we're diving into a pivotal and often misunderstood chapter of history, the Boxer Rebellion. That's right. It's a story of uprising, international intervention, and dramatic shifts in China's history. But before we get into it, a quick reminder to our listeners, if you enjoy our deep dives into history, please give us a five-star review. It helps us reach more history buffs like you. All right, let's set the stage for the Boxer Rebellion. The world at the turn of the 20th century was a mosaic of empires, emerging nations, and global tensions. Exactly, Chuck. In the midst of this global backdrop, China was a nation in turmoil. The Qing dynasty, ruling since the 17th century, was grappling with both internal strife and external pressures. That's right. Internally, China was facing widespread economic hardship. Rapid population growth had led to land shortages and famines were frequent. And don't forget the Opium Wars Chuck. The mid-19th century conflicts with Britain had forced China to make major concessions, like ceding Hong Kong and opening up ports to foreign trade. This led to a significant presence of foreign powers in China. Western countries in Japan had established spheres of influence in various parts of China, exploiting its resources and markets. Precisely. This foreign dominance wasn't just economic, it had a cultural and religious aspect too. Christian missionaries were spreading throughout China, often protected by their home country's embassies or consulates. And this didn't sit well with many Chinese, leading to a rise in nationalist sentiment. The Qing government was seen as weak and unable to defend Chinese interests against foreign encroachment. Enter the Boxers, a group born out of this nationalist fervor. They were primarily peasants and workers who were dissatisfied with foreign influence and the Qing government's inability to address their grievances. They practiced martial arts, believed in spirit possession, and claimed they were impervious to bullets. A mix of desperation, mysticism, and nationalism you could say. It was a powder keg waiting to explode. And when it did, it set off a chain of events that would rock the foundations of the Qing dynasty and change China's trajectory in the 20th century. So, that's the world in which the Boxer Rebellion erupted, a China struggling under the weight of internal and external pressures, setting the stage for a dramatic clash. Now, let's dive into how the Boxer Rebellion actually ignited. It wasn't just an overnight phenomenon, was it Marco? Far from it Chuck. The rise of the Boxers, or the Righteous and Harmonious Fists, was a gradual process. It was rooted in deep-seated issues, economic distress, cultural clashes, and a brewing resentment against foreign and Christian presence. Yeah, these guys didn't just wake up one day and decide to start a rebellion. There were significant triggers. For instance, the widespread natural disasters like floods and droughts in Shandong province, which devastated the livelihoods of many peasants. And these natural calamities weren't just seen through the lens of economic hardship. Many boxers believed they were divine retribution for the presence of foreigners and the spread of Christianity in China. That's right. But it wasn't just about religion or superstition. There was also a strong anti-imperialist sentiment. Many Chinese felt humiliated by the concessions their government had made to foreign powers. Exactly, and the boxers tapped into this sentiment. They started by attacking Christian missionaries and Chinese converts, whom they viewed as symbols of foreign encroachment and cultural erosion. Their attacks were brutal and uncompromising. Churches were burned and entire Christian communities were targeted. But it wasn't just about religion, it was a cry against the disruption of their traditional way of life. And the Qing dynasty's stance was ambivalent at first. The government was torn between suppressing this violent uprising and harnessing the boxers' anti-foreign sentiment to bolster their own legitimacy. It's a classic case of a government trying to ride the tiger, isn't it? They thought they could use the boxers to their advantage but ended up getting more than they bargained for. Absolutely. And things really escalated when the boxers moved towards Beijing. Their siege of the foreign legation quarter in 1900 was a major turning point. It wasn't just a local uprising anymore, it became an international incident. That siege was a real signal to the world that this was a major crisis. 
foreign diplomats, civilians, and even some Chinese Christians took refuge in the legation quarter, surrounded by an angry, passionate mob convinced of their cause. And this is where the Qing dynasty made a critical decision. In a surprising move, Empress Dowager Cixi declared support for the boxers and officially declared war on the foreign powers. A risky move that turned this into a full-blown international conflict. So, the Boxer Rebellion has kicked into high gear with the siege of Beijing. But it's not just a Chinese affair anymore. This is where the international community steps in, right Marco? That's correct Chuck. The siege of the foreign legation quarter in Beijing was a major turning point. It wasn't just an internal Chinese conflict, it had become an international crisis. Foreign diplomats, civilians, and some Chinese Christians were trapped, facing constant attack. And this is where we see the formation of the Eight Nation Alliance. It's like the Avengers of the early 20th century, but instead of superheroes, we have imperial powers. Exactly Chuck. The Eight Nation Alliance consisted of Japan, Russia, Britain, France, the United States, Germany, Italy, and Austria-Hungary. Each of these countries had vested interests in China, and they weren't about to sit back and watch. It's fascinating how quickly they formed this coalition, considering the imperial rivalries at the time. I guess nothing brings enemies together like a common adversary. Indeed Chuck. Their primary objective was to rescue their citizens trapped in the legation quarter. But their motives weren't purely altruistic. This was also about protecting their interests in China and asserting their dominance. So, they send in a multinational force, but it's not a walk in the park, is it? Far from it. The foreign troops faced fierce resistance from the boxers and, by this point, the Chinese Imperial Army. The battles were intense and brutal, especially as they neared Beijing. And there's a lot of complexity in this response. It's not just a military intervention, there are political dynamics at play. Each member of the alliance is trying to assert its influence, not just over China but also over each other. Right. The dynamics of the alliance were as complicated as the conflict itself. There were disagreements on strategy, post-war plans, and the extent of intervention necessary. And let's not forget the humanitarian aspect. The siege and the battles leading up to it led to significant civilian suffering and loss of life. Absolutely. The impact on the local Chinese population was devastating. Many were caught in the crossfire, facing violence, displacement, and famine. So, the Eight Nation Alliance eventually breaks the siege, but this is just the beginning of a larger occupation and a series of events that will reshape China. Indeed Chuck. Diving into the heart of the Boxer Rebellion, the key battles, and the heroes who emerged from this conflict. Marco, where do we start? Well Chuck, one of the pivotal battles was the Battle of Tintsin in July 1900. This was a major offensive by the Eight Nation Alliance aimed at capturing the strategic city of Tianjin, which was a gateway to Beijing. Right, and the battle was intense. The Allied forces had to deal with strong fortifications and determined resistance from both Boxer and Qing troops. The city was heavily fortified, and the fighting was brutal, with significant casualties on both sides. Another key battle was the Battle of Yangtzean. The Allied forces had to cross the heavily defended Yang River. The tactics here were complex, the Allies used a combined force of infantry, cavalry, and naval firepower to break through the Chinese defenses. And let's not forget the siege of the international legations. For almost two months, over 800 soldiers and civilians from various countries, along with about 3,000 Chinese Christians, held out against the Boxers and Qing forces. Absolutely Chuck. The resilience and resourcefulness of those besieged were remarkable. There were several heroes during this siege. One notable figure was Sir Claude Maxwell MacDonald, the British minister to China, who coordinated the defense of the legation quarter. And on the Chinese side, there's General Rong Lu. He's a complex figure, often criticized for his role in the rebellion, but he also made efforts to protect the legation quarter and prevent a massacre. The heroics weren't limited to military leaders. There were numerous acts of bravery and sacrifice by ordinary soldiers and civilians. Like the Russian Captain Riley, who led a daring charge against the boxers at the Battle of Langfang. These stories highlight the human aspect of the conflict. Amidst the political and military strategies, there were individuals risking their lives, often in the face of overwhelming odds. 
And that's what makes the Boxer Rebellion such a compelling story. It's not just about the battles and tactics, it's about the people who lived, fought, and in many cases died during these tumultuous times. Well said Marco. But the rebellion didn't just end with these battles. Let's explore the aftermath and the lasting impact of the Boxer Rebellion. This wasn't just a blip in history, was it Marco? Not at all Chuck. The end of the Boxer Rebellion marked the beginning of a significant era for China. The signing of the Boxer Protocol in September 1901 was a key moment. Right, the Boxer Protocol. This was more than just a peace agreement, it was a set of punitive measures imposed on China by the Eight Nation Alliance. It had profound implications, didn't it? Absolutely. For starters, it imposed a huge indemnity on China, an incredible sum of 450 million taels of silver, which took a massive toll on China's economy. And it wasn't just about money. The protocol also demanded numerous concessions from China, including the right for foreign troops to be stationed in Beijing and other key areas. This effectively meant a loss of sovereignty for China in many respects. It was a humiliation for the Qing dynasty and a clear sign that foreign powers had a stranglehold over China's affairs. And this had a ripple effect across Chinese society, didn't it? It fueled further anti-foreign sentiment and contributed to the growing call for reform and revolution. Exactly. The Qing dynasty's failure to effectively deal with the Boxer Rebellion and the resulting harsh terms of the Boxer Protocol catalyzed the revolutionary movements. That would eventually lead to the fall of the dynasty in 1912. So, in a way, the Boxer Rebellion set the stage for the birth of modern China. It was a catalyst for change, pushing China towards a path of reform and modernization. And the cultural impact should not be underestimated. The rebellion and its suppression had a profound effect on the national psyche. It highlighted the need for China to strengthen itself against foreign domination and to modernize its military and institutions. The Boxer Rebellion also had international ramifications. It changed the way the Western powers viewed and interacted with China and played a part in shaping early 20th century international relations in East Asia. Indeed Chuck. The Boxer Rebellion is a poignant reminder of the complexities of imperialism, nationalism, and the struggle for sovereignty. It's a chapter in history that continues to resonate in discussions about East-West relations and the legacy of colonialism. Well, that brings us to the end of our episode on the Boxer Rebellion. We hope we've shed some light on this tumultuous period in history. And don't forget folks, if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a 5-star review. It helps us reach more history enthusiasts like you. Check out our new merchandise as well, link in the show notes. And as a thank you to our listeners, we're offering a 10% discount on your first purchase. Just use the code the History AI Podcast, all one word, at checkout. And if you have a historical topic you're passionate about and want us to cover, let us know on social media. We love hearing from you. Thanks for tuning into the History AI Podcast. Until next time, keep exploring the past. Remember, history isn't just about the past, it's about understanding the present and shaping the future. Bye everyone. Step into the thrilling world of sports betting with The Starting Line, an introduction to sports betting. Whether you're a beginner or simply curious, this comprehensive guide takes you from the basics to the advanced. Learn to decode odds, develop winning strategies, and bet responsibly. Get your copy now and transform every game into an adventure. The Starting Line is your first step towards mastering the art of sports betting. Available on Amazon.